Good evening, dear viewer. Tis I, your host for this day, evening, James. What are we talking today about, my dear viewer? Today, we're actually going to talk about scary stalker stories. We shall be keeping in theme of this month on Dear Old Hallow's Eve. So, let me preface this by saying that the stories I'm about to read to you are real life experiences that others have had in their own lives. So, without further ado, let us jump into the first story, shall we? The first story I shall read to you now is from a redditor on the Let's Not Meet subreddit. The title is a little long, but the title reads, Please, don't overestimate your ability to be a caretaker for your mentally ill family member. And so now we begin. I just went on a big family camping trip, and one night, around the campfire, we got to sharing spooky slash creepy stories. This led me to reading aloud from No Sleep. And from there, I kind of meandered over to LNM, which prompted my dad to remind me of something that happened at their house while I was away during my freshman year of college. He, my mom, and my little brother were home when this happened. In the middle of the night, my mother hears the front door of the house open and close. At first, she figures it's me coming home from college. But, as the fog clears a bit, she realizes that I have literally never shown up unannounced in the middle of the night. She assumes something is wrong with me and gets up out of bed to come make sure I'm okay when she hears the intruder. Where is she? She runs over to my dad and wakes him up, then grabs the phone and dial 911. The intruder bounds up the stairs and stops at the landing repeating the same phrases over and over again. My dad goes outside to see what the hell is going on, weaponless. Intruder is holding something, but my dad can't tell what it is. He describes the look in his eyes as that of an absolutely deranged person, devoid of humanity. I know you're hiding her. Here. The intruder runs away from my dad and heads towards the other end of the hallway, methodically checking each bedroom. My brother's room is the second one he opens, and my brother plays dead, acting like the ordeal hasn't woken him up. One of the dogs sleeps with him, though, and she's freaking out at the screaming stranger. She really was never the same, always more of a skittish and wary of strangers. Whether it is the dog barking or my brother not responding, the intruder loses interest and moves on, circling back to my dad at the landing. He has never stopped shouting about this woman he is looking for. At this point, my mother has informed emergency services of what's happening, and my dad is determined to keep the guide occupied until the police can arrive. My dad shuts mom in, the, in their room and blocks his path down the stairs. He finally gets a look at the intruder, what the intruder is holding, because he flings it all at my dad. It's not a weapon. It's their mail. After throwing it all, the intruder goes into a panic and starts shuffling through the pile on the landing, finally finding what he's looking for. A Victoria's Secrets catalog with Adriano Lima on the cover. He points to the cover, once again demanding my dad tell him where he's hiding her. I know you're keeping my girlfriend here. Just let her go and we'll leave. My dad denies knowing anything about Adriano Lima's whereabouts. The intruder is not satisfied and he demands that my father get on his knees and swear to God that they have kidnapped his girlfriend. Once my dad is in this vulnerable position, the intruder pushes him off to the side and jets down the stairs and out the front door. After the police showed up and the adrenaline has subsided, my dad realized he recognized the intruder. It was the brother of one of our neighbors. The guy used to live with them for years and was very reclusive. No one had seen him in a while, but apparently he was back living with them. Conclusion, there are some time gaps here, but I wanted to wrap things up with some final details. 
The intruder was eventually caught that night. My dad, ever the schmoozer, got all buddy-buddy with one of the officers and would impress him for the details as they emerge. The intruder was not on any drugs that the police tested for. Doesn't tell us much, really. Dad also found out later that besides the intruder's sister, Adriana Lima was the only person listed on his inmate contact list. So that must have been a pretty heavy psychosis. When Dad finally got to talk to the sister, she told him he'd spent some time institutionalized and had recently been released into her custody. Finally, the real kicker. Once the guy got out of jail, he was allowed to go right back living with his sister. I didn't know that last bit until this, this story was recounted during the camping trip. Recently, my wife and I decided to move back to my childhood neighborhood. One street over for my folks so we could get some help with our one-year-old daughter. So, crazy guy who probably shouldn't be living with your sister as your primary caretaker. Let's not meet. This next story comes from the same subreddit of Let's Not Meet. This next story is titled, Want Some Vodka. I've lived in North Carolina for the past 10 years of my life, mainly in one of the big cities. I used to live in a not-so-great area of the city. It was so bad that I got sexually assaulted and one of my neighbors got murdered. So, I'm used to not-so-friendly people in not the best of places. Around seven years ago, my parents got better jobs in a different part of the city, and I went to a school in that same area, so we moved, and it's a lot nicer. I feel safe enough to chill outside late at night, and everyone is pretty friendly. Still, we're cautious. I'm training karate. My dad owns two shotguns. Scary looking, but he's a big baby. There's a neighborhood cat he's best friends with, and he cries when people don't pet him. But he can be scary. The first time he barked, I nearly shit my pants. Because he's so big, people tend to stop and ask about him when I'm walking him. They'll come up and ask the typical question about what breed he is, how much he weighs, and all that stuff. He normally sits there and loves the attention. Everyone in my neighborhood is friendly for the most part, and they know me as the girl with a gigantic dog. One evening in mid-June, I'm walking jacks and listening to my music when we cross the road and this guy is parking in his driveway. He's older probably in his mid-forties, and he waves at us. I wave back and try to continue on my way, but he approaches me. I groan internally and yank out my headphones as he walks over, all smiles. What kind of dog you got there? he asks, and I noticed he's covered in what looks like grease or oil. An American Akita, I respond, trying to keep it short and simple so I can go back home and eat dinner, but this man keeps talking. Jesus, he's a big one. How old is he? He asks, and I tell him he's six years old, and that he was born on Christmas. The man nods and smiles. I notice that something is up. Jax, for once, is not sitting down and wagging his tail, begging for attention. Instead, he's pulling on his leash, trying to drag me away. I assume he wants to finish his walk, so I tell him the man, bye, and turn to walk away when he yells after me. Wait, can I buy your dog? He asks. I'll give you $600. I turn around and look at him with a shocked look on my face. Until then, no one had ever asked to buy my dog from me. Sorry. I stammer out. He's not for sale. I tell him, and Jax is still tugging on his leash, and I'm starting to get creeped out. Who just asks to buy someone's pet from them on the street? The man frowns and crosses his arms. Ah, oh, well, do you want some vodka? He asks. Sir, I'm 17. I tell him, starting to back away. 
He laughs and shakes his head. Come on. I won't tell them. <laughs> Loosen up a bit, girl. He says, and he grabs my arm and starts pulling on me. Just then, Jax comes whipping around and starts barking like mad. The dude lets go and starts cursing at me, and Jax is still loosing it. I've got tears in my eyes, and I start running up the street back to my house, dragging Jax with me, who's still barking. At this point, this super deep and animalistic bark has attracted the attention of all the other dogs in the, na in the neighborhood. And as I'm running... <laughs> As I'm running two blocks to my house, there's about a dozen dogs barking in their yards and houses. I got home, locked the door, and told my mother what happened while Jax stood at the window for a good 30 minutes, just staring at the street. It's been a year since that happened, and I don't watch Jax that way anymore, but I did notice the house has been foreclosed on. To the man who tried to buy my dog, then offered me vodka and tried to drag me into your house. Let's not meet again. During the recording of this, apparently this was something that had been going on by someone on the subreddit Let's Not Meet by Anonymous Hippie. So, without further ado, the title of this one is Something Isn't Right Being Watched. Hey everyone, honestly, I'm spooked right now. So a lot of backstory that will not be normally supplied. And I'm sorry, I'm... I'm sorry in advance if this is not the best writing. Any questions you have, I'll do my best to answer if there's any gaps. There are a series of random occurrences that I hadn't thought much of until tonight. I live in an average middle class neighborhood. I've always been safe. In fact, the town is becoming more affluent than it was when I was a kid. I'll go ahead and hop right in. ...at the class and found my car broken into. It was a disaster. They destroyed everything, yet nothing was stolen except for personal things I care about that nobody else would. An example is my harmonica. It felt personal and it felt violating. Anybody who really knows me knows I love my skateboard, my cat, and my harmonica. I was shaken, but honestly just moved on and figured that it was any petty random drug addict looking for money or drugs. Called the cops. There was nothing they could do. I tried to understand. Fast forward to two weeks. I'm in the kitchen making food. I'm the only one in our house who is literally nocturnal. I never go to bed. It was about 2 a.m. I suddenly felt scared. Or watched. I look outside to the window in the room directly to my right. And I see a figure staring at me from outside. I think the creepiest part was that he didn't run off. When I saw him and I froze, he just sauntered off into the night. I know this is stupid of me, but I didn't call the cops. I don't know. I always seem to just end up feeling even more helpless when I do. Then, a week ago, a naked man was found in our yard. What? Originally, I was amused by this. This time, the cops actually did pick him up. We only knew he was there because some woman we had never seen knocked on our door and literally said, Uh, there's a naked dude in your yard. No joke. There was no words of who who he was or why he was there. I asked the police and they wouldn't say a word. I never put any of these together until tonight. I was sitting at the computer here and I heard someone try to get in my back door two times. There's a distinct noise it makes because it's this old double French door. It makes a pressure sound due to the old-fashioned latch at the top. It's actually pretty impossible to get into without using a battering ram until you tear the latch from the wall. <laughs> Whoever this is, try to get in twice. Now, I'm paranoid and have no idea what to do. I'll post updates if anyone is even interested. I'm kind of scared that I made an enemy somehow. 
Our neighborhood never had any crime or anything close to this. Thanks for reading. For those of you who are. What spooks me the most is that lately I've been thinking, oh my god, did I just see someone outside my window? All over the house, but I figured, oh, you're paranoid. Until I literally looked right at this guy. It was so dark. All I saw was his outline and movements. Another story. This story is titled, My First Girlfriend's Crazy Admirer. I got together with my first girlfriend at the age of 15. She was the kind of girl that always chatted with guys and had made a lot of weird contacts over the internet. But since I was 15 and kind of lucky to finally have a girlfriend, I was letting all that slide. There was this one particular guy she had a lot of contact with. He was about 25, and they had already had contact before her and I were together. They had even met once. But since he was living about an hour away, they were chatting or camming most of the time. I still don't know why I accepted things like that back then. After her and I got together, this guy started getting weirder and weirder. He started telling her that he loved her, and she should be together with him, and all that weird stuff. She started to respond less and less, distance herself from him, but he started to call her at night and write weird messages about how much he loved her and he wouldn't want to live a life without her. This carried on for some time and got more and more disturbing. He started telling her that he would come look for her and we started getting worried. I got a look at his car on some kind of social media page. There was no Facebook back then. And I started getting paranoid looking for this car everywhere we went. This whole situation carried on for some time with more scary messages and we started to get more paranoid from day to day. Finally, one day my girlfriend showed up at my house with her cell phone at her ear. She was looking really afraid and put her phone on speaker. All I could hear was this crazy voice. He was screaming and breathing heavy. He was crying and screaming things like, If I can't have you, nobody will. And I'll kill both of you. He told her that if she hangs up, he will drive over to us and further illustrate what he would do to us. She muted the phone and told me he Skyped her in the middle of the night and started cutting himself in front of the webcam, threatening to kill himself. We were fucking scared, and we heard him scream and cry like crazy the whole time. We didn't know what to do, and did not want to involve our parents in all of this. All his threats got more and more crazy. I told her to hang up, and she did, but she was scared, sh scared as shit for weeks. Always looking for his car, or him waiting for us somewhere. Fortunately, he never did show up. And we never heard from him again. But I still remember how scared and helpless we felt at that time. This next story takes place in 1995. The title of this story is called, I Could Have Ended Up on the Side of a Milk Carton in 1995. I was 10 years old when this happened to me. I lived in a very nice neighborhood called River Plantation. We had a golf course, clubhouse, and Olympic-sized pool where me and every other kid spent most of our summer at. We also had our own phone book for our community that listed names and names of parents and the children living in the household. One summer day, me and my sitter were swimming at the pool when I decided I needed a break from the heat. And swimming, you know, makes you hungry. She drove us back to my house. As soon as I walk through the door, I hear the phone ringing. I answer. And it's a man claiming to be my doctor. He says that I have an appointment with him that day. He asked me some strange questions. But of course, I answer not knowing any better. He asks if I'm developing yet, and I say no. He asks if I have been home all day, and I explain that I have been swimming at the clubhouse. 
He then asks if I'm wearing a swimsuit, hmm? And I say yes. He asks me if I'm wet. And I remember pausing for a second thinking, what a dumb question. Then I say yes. The man gets quiet for a minute. He tells me he's supposed to pick me up for my appointment, but that if I wanted to have more time to swim, that he, he could pick me up at the pool at 3 p.m. in a blue car. So, I agree to be waiting for him at 3, 3 p.m. I, I remember being kind of irritated that he was cutting into my swim time that day. After I hang up, I tell my sitter about the phone call. She looked horrified. I knew something wasn't right at that point. We go back to the pool, but don't go inside. Within 10 minutes, two unmarked cars pull up. They're police cars. The sitter speaks to them briefly, then we go inside the clubhouse. At about 3.30, one of the officers comes inside and pulls my sitter away from the table she was sitting to tell her of the arrest. Till this day, I don't know if the guy was charged with anything or not. I hope he was, though. My, my. My, my. What a fright. What a fright. These stories have been delightful, though. It's rather interesting to hear other people's experiences with such a subject. With people who, who stop. It's an interesting subject to talk about. If you or anyone you know is being stalked or is in mortal peril of any sorts, please lend them a hand. Don't brush it off the side as anything minor. Some of these people may have very well have died, but as some of the stories went on, you can tell that they obviously survived tell their own tales. So, they say, reality is a much more scarier thing than fiction. This one proves to be true. So my dear viewer, without further ado, thank you for tuning in for this Halloween special, and remember to stay positively ghoulish.